Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to go over a mixture and concentration problem with you as a linear first order differential equation. So if we have a tank, it contains 100 gallons of pure water, and we have a salt water solution that is 4% salt, 96% water, and we're going to begin pumping that into the tank at a rate of 2 gallons per minute. At the same time, we are going to start draining out liquid from the tank, also at the same rate of 2 gallons per minute. So you notice we're keeping 100 gallons in the tank at all points in time because the rate going in and the rate going out is the same. We'll go ahead and make a note here that we're assuming that we have perfectly mixed liquid, whether that's super possible or only approximately possible. We're just going to assume that whatever's in the tank is perfectly mixed as we drain it. We want to find an equation that represents the amount of salt in the tank at a particular time. So we're going to go ahead and assign, I guess, the amount of salt in the tank. We'll call that A. So our capital A, we're going to go ahead and say is the amount of salt in the tank at time t. And we have some stuff entering the tank and we have some stuff leaving the tank. So what we want to think about is the rate of change with respect to time of the amount of salt in the tank. So the rate of change in the amount of salt with respect to time is going to be a couple of things. It's going to have to do with the rate of salt that's going into the tank. So right, we're pumping stuff into the tank. So we have the rate of salt going in to the tank. And then we have stuff leaving the tank, and that's going to have some sort of amount of salt. So we also have a rate of some sort of salt that is leaving the tank. So we think of our overall rate of change of salt in the tank is the rate of salt coming into the tank minus the rate of salt going out of the tank. How do we calculate these? Well, these are going to be percentages of quantities, right? So percentage of quantity means we'll take that percent and multiply it by the quantity or the rate there. So our rate of salt in, let's go ahead and write that down. So salt in well, for the rate of salt coming in, it's a 4% salt mixture that's being pumped into the tank. So 4% of what's coming in is salt. And how much is coming in? Coming in at a rate of 2 gallons per minute, right? So 4% of 2 gallons per minute would mean 4% of times 2 gallons per minute. All right, and we'll also need the rate of salt going out of the tank, so we'll get that. So we have our second thing here for our DADT. Now with salt out, it's just a tad more complicated than salt in. With salt in, we had a definite quality of 4% salt going in, and we knew our rate was 2 gallons per minute. Now I'm also draining at 2 gallons per minute, so I also know that this is going to be times 2 gallons per minute as well. The question is, what is the percent of salt in what we're draining out. It's perfectly mixed, so that plays into the idea here. If we want a percentage of what's being drained out of the tank in terms of the salt, well that's just going to be however much salt we have in the tank out of 100 gallons. right? So think about if we had one gallon of salt in a 100 gallon tank, that would be 1% salt that would be being drained out. right? So really, it's A divided by 100. That is the saltiness that we are draining at any point in time. Okay, so our rate of salt going into the tank is going to be 4% times 2 gallons per minute. Our rate of salt going out is going to be whatever A is, the amount of salt in the tank at that time, divided by 100, times the rate 2 gallons per minute. So let's go ahead and get statements here. This will be like 0.04 times 2 gallons per minute. So that would be 0 0.08 gallons per minute. And then over here we have A divided by 100 times 2, so that would be 2 over 100. So this would be 0 0.02 A gallons per minute. And now let's go ahead and plug in our rate of salt in and our rate of salt out into our equation over here. So we'll get dA dt is equal to, I'm going to leave off the gallons per minute. We know that that's the units in which A is changing. So that'll be 0 0.08 minus 0 0.02 times A. And this is now a linear differential equation. It's not in normal form yet, but it is a linear differential equation. If we move this A term over to the other side, 
then will be a normal form. We have dA dt plus 0.02a is equal to 0 0.08. And now this is linear, it's in normal form. I can find my integrating factor, so we'll go ahead and do that. The integrating factor will be e to the integral of this function here in front of a, which is 0 0.02, so integral of 0 0.02. And because it's dA dt, we are integrating dt. And this is not so bad to do, right? This just becomes e to the 0 0.02 t. That's our integrating factor. We'll go ahead and multiply our entire equation by the integrating factor, and then we'll solve this. So we get e to the point o 2t times dA dt plus 0.02a equals 0 0.08. Now remember what we've done in all of our linear equation videos. We have not distributed on the left side. There's not really any need to because we know with a linear equation and our integrating factor that the left side is just going to become a product rule with our dependent variable a and the integrating factor. But we'll go ahead and multiply over here, so we'll think of this as 0.08e to the 0.02t. If I take the antiderivative with respect to t, since this is a product rule of a and the integrating factor, we get a times e to the 0.02t. All right, over here, I'll go ahead and put my 0.08 out front. I do actually need to do the integral. So we get that times the integral of e to the 0.02t dt. And now integrating, let's go ahead and move up here. We'll get a times e to the 0.02t. And on this side, let's think about what would happen. The reciprocal of 0.02 is going to come out when we integrate this. This is our constant multiple here. Dividing by 0.02 in the front, 0.08 divided by 0.02 actually gives us 4. So we'll get 4 e to the 0.02t plus some constant. And now if I divide everything by my e to the 0.02t, and we get some simplified stuff over there, right? We get that a is equal to 4 plus c e to the negative 0.02t. Now this would be our general solution, but we should additionally know something, right? We started at the very beginning with no salt in the tank. So that initial condition wasn't stated as an equation, but it was stated in words that the amount of salt at time zero was zero. We started with pure water in the tank. So if we think of our initial condition A of zero equal to zero, and we plug those in, plug in zero for T and plug in zero for A, then we'll get that zero is equal to four plus C times E to the, this all becomes zero here. And if we get zero is equal to four plus, this is really C times one, then that gives us that our constant here is actually negative four. So now if we replace our C with negative four, then our amount of salt in the tank at time t, so let's call it A of t as our equation here, is equal to four minus four e to the negative 0.02 t. And that's just from plugging our C back into our general solution here.